gadgets and gizmos brought to you by Quicker Next, No Faker, Chat Quicker, and HDFC Ergo Journal Insurance. Hello and welcome to another power packed episode of the Gadgets and Gizmo show with me Siddharth Sharma. We have some amazing smartphones and cameras lined up for you guys this week. But before we begin, let's take a look at what else is on the show for you guys in the next half an hour. On the show this week, we get you the review of the all new Samsung Galaxy Note Edge. We also tell you how good is the Windows 10 experience and also how to take a perfect selfie. This is the all new Samsung Galaxy Note Edge and this smartphone has been making a lot of waves in the technology world especially because of its curved display. Let's take a look at its specs first and then give you the review of the all new Samsung Galaxy Note Edge. Samsung Galaxy Note 8 sports a 5.6 inch Super AMOLED curved quad HD display and is powered by a 2.7 GHz quad core processor backed by 3 GB of RAM. For connectivity you get Bluetooth 4.1, Wi-Fi and NFC. At the back you get a 16 megapixel autofocus camera with smart optical image stabilization and up front there's a 3.7 megapixel camera with f1.9. There is also 32 GB onboard storage. It houses a 3000 mAh battery as well. Samsung Galaxy Note Edge comes at a box price of Rs 68,500. Alright, those were the specs on the all new Samsung Galaxy Note Edge. Now let's tell you whether this smartphone is actually edgy or just another gimmick from the house of Samsung. The Galaxy Note Edge, essentially the Galaxy Note 4 with a twist. The Samsung Galaxy Note Edge is fantastic in the hand. The added screen dimension makes it look and feel a lot more premium than its cousin Note 4. Samsung has tried its best to make this section of the phone usable by creating a host of OS strips that you can add to the lip of the screen. These include things like weather, Twitter and news updates. One great move Samsung has done is making the lip of the display work independent of the main screen. So it's like having two displays in one single phone. The new screen design gives the easier access to applications as well. The 5.6 inch Super AMOLED curved quad HD display is actually brilliant. The 2.7 GHz quad core processor backed by 3GB RAM is also ample for this smartphone and you will never find it lagging and what will make you worry most of the times is that how to utilize that 3GB of RAM to its full potential. Connectivity wise you get Bluetooth 4.1, Wi-Fi, NFC and also 4G. The Note Edge runs on Android 4.4 KitKat. Now with a brand new phone like this, why would a company roll out a previous generation operating system? It's just not fair to the consumers to wait for the lollipop update. Otherwise the performance is seamless. And it's as well performing as the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. The 16 megapixel autofocus camera with smart optical image stabilization is also brilliant. It delivers great picture quality and video recordings in high definition. The 3.7 megapixel front camera with f1.9 is also great to have for selfie lovers. The camera performance is great overall on the Note Edge. Samsung claims that the Note Edge's battery life is comparable to that of the Note 4. The battery has a slightly smaller capacity of 3000 mAh. A full charge still lasts a day. The Samsung Galaxy Note Edge's curved asymmetrical shape and brand new interface deliver a cutting edge design that really lives up to its name. But on the other hand, it's wider and much pricier than the Note 4 without dramatically increasing the phone's functionality. The high price tag of 68,500 rupees and minimal extra usability makes for a niche appeal. Okay, good news for all you Halo lovers out there. The all new Halo, the Master Chief Collection is out there for grabs on your Xbox. And next up on the show, we tell you whether this game is worth your money or not. Our duty as soldiers is to protect humanity. 
whatever the cost. Halo The Master Chief Collection is a compilation of sci-fi shooter classics and arguably the biggest release of the year for Microsoft and Xbox. Halo The Master Chief Collection brings four Halo Edition games together in one package. Halo Combat Evolve Anniversary, Halo 2 Anniversary, Halo 3 and Halo 4 are laid out in such a way that will take all you Halo fans down the memory lane. Every mission is available right from the start, so you can head straight to the places you best remember or start an adventure over from the beginning. Remastered visuals and audio are crafted to exist alongside the original asset. And your Master Chief calls me Fred. And you could switch between them with the press of a button. Crossing a suspension bridge in a tank and blasting vehicles out of the sky is a thrill either way. But it's amped up when you're blasting the robust new remastering of that excellent soundtrack. The new complement of weapons, abilities and enemies carry the torch of diversity and flexibility proudly through the transition. Halo 4 was the first Halo developed entirely by 343 Industries and not Halo's creators Bungie. It's also the best looking game in the collection and though you can see its age relative to most recent releases, it's still a vivid and attractive game. Halo The Master Chief Collection is an attractive package for all Halo fans. But this Xbox One exclusive title is a rushed, unfinished and buggy mess with a barely working multiplayer mode that's made continually worse by developers at 343 Industries. So for now spending Rs 4299 on this game is not that great an idea. Play the older versions and be happy. Now with all the technology around us, our attention spans are deteriorating. We get bored very soon, don't we? So we thought why not tell you guys about a few games that you can play on a boring day. If you like us constantly get bored and have nothing better to do other than check your Facebook every other minute, then why not fire up your smartphone or tablet and download a few of these best free game apps that will keep you entertained on the most boring of days. First on our list is Candy Crush Saga, which is probably the sweetest game ever. And one of the favorite ways for people to kill their time. It features well over 400 levels of increasing difficulty. Yet the underlying concept is child's play. Simply tap on the sweets and swipe them around the grid to match those of the same color and clear the level before moving to the next level. This addictive puzzle game is one of the most downloaded games on cross OS platforms that is completely free and takes on a sugary sweet adventure through level after level of candy crushing goodness. Next up is Roto, which is a simple puzzle with balls of different sizes and you play as the smallest one. The game offers a simple one-tap control and using that the player has to jump across different rotatory platforms, collecting stars, avoiding deadly obstacles and unlocking more levels as you go. Roto's simplicity will keep you entertained for hours and you won't even notice how quickly the time flies by. Quiz Up is a great way to pass the time with friends and family or on your own. Test your trivia IQ and challenge friends or play against random opponents with this app. During each round, you and your opponent have 10 seconds to answer each of the 7 multiple choice questions. The quicker you get the correct answer, the more points you score. Choose from a variety of categories and topics including current events, history, food, books, celebrities and many more. If you want a game that will get your pulse pounding, then Asphalt 8 Airborne is definitely worth a go. Players can work their way through the career mode, unlock new rides, upgrade the ones they have or take the competition online in live multiplayer. The incredibly polished graphics and outstanding soundtrack make Asphalt 8 a great racing game and the Apple Store. So if you're still looking for the most addictive Android game, then Clash of Clans would be an intelligent choice. With that, it's time for us to take a very small break on the show, but you guys don't go anywhere because there's a lot more technology action. Welcome back, you're watching the Gadgets and Gizmo show with me, Siddharth Sharma. 
Now there's a war brewing among smartphone companies to make the slimmest smartphone in the world. Geoni and Oppo have already tried their hands at it with the Geoni S5.1 and the Oppo R5. And now there's another Chinese company in the market that has come out with the slimmest phone in the world. This one is called the Vivo 5X Max. And next up on the show, Nishant Nair gets you a review of this new slim smartphone. Hi, today I'm going to be talking about the slimmest smartphone in the world which also doubles up as a paper cutter in your office. I'm going to be talking about Vivo X5 Max, the slimmest smartphone in the world. So let's talk about the design. The good thing about this smartphone is, despite it being very slim and sleek, it does not feel fragile. It's a sturdy body, it's got metal bezel all around which ensures that the frame of the phone stays intact. It is indeed a very very good phone to hold to. Talking about the display, this is a 5.5 inch Super AMOLED screen and a Full HD display. Despite being a Super AMOLED display, the screen feels very very reflective under bright sunlight and it does not feel very bright either. Under the hood, the phone is powered by 1.7 GHz octa-core processor coupled with 2 GB RAM. While the RAM is a bit underpowered right now as per market specs, but then the octa-core processor makes sure that the functioning on this phone is very good. The phone has a 16 GB internal memory, but the good part here is that it's expandable to 128 GB. Talking about connectivity, the phone has 4G LTE capability, it's a dual SIM smartphone, it has nano SIM capability as well as a micro SIM capability, 4G works on both SIM card options, it has the standard Bluetooth connectivity and Wi-Fi connectivity as well. Let's talk about the software, the phone runs on Android KitKat 4.4 coupled with FunTouch OS. Talking about FunTouch OS, I really like this bloatware because it has very crisp, very nicely laid app icons. It looks like it has come straight out from iOS but then it's very fun to look at, the icons are very good to look at as well. Performance wise the phone gives a lag free experience and the true capability of a 64 bit chip would really come to use when Android Lollipop is rolled out on this phone. Now let's talk about the primary camera on this phone. This is a 13 megapixel camera that is just like any other run of the mill smartphone right now in the market. But the problem with this 13 megapixel camera is that the pictures under the sunlight seem to be okay yet grainy but in low light it, these are very very bad pictures so I wouldn't say it's one of the best cameras out there now the phone also has a 5 megapixel selfie camera which is just like any other Chinese flagship phone out there but the good thing about the selfie camera is that yes you can have decent selfies and flood your Facebook with those pictures a 2000 mAh battery is a bit of a letdown on this phone but make sure if you're buying it you carry a battery pack and a battery charger as well. At Rs 32980 this is an expensive slim phone to buy and considering that it has a mediocre battery life and a mediocre camera the Geoni S5.1 is definitely a better deal over this. Now let's tell you what Microsoft has been up to. They recently came out with the all new Windows 10. And next up, Sahil Gupta tells you what's so different about this new operating system from Microsoft. Windows 10 is a big release for Microsoft. Windows is central to everything that the company does. And in the last few years, the market share of the PC market has been going down. Hence, Windows sales are also in decline. With Windows 10, Microsoft attempts to remedy that. Let's see what's special about Windows 10. Probably the coolest thing about Windows 10 is that it's going to be a free upgrade for everyone who uses Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 in the first year of the release. So you don't need to bother about updating your version of Windows because Microsoft will offer it for free. The other cool bit about Windows 10 is that it's going to be free across devices. It's going to be free for the PC, the tablet and even phone. So now Microsoft is not using the Windows phone branding anymore. It now calls its phone OS also Windows. Windows 10 is the OS that unifies everything. According to Microsoft, Windows 10 is going to work across a wide array of devices. So this means Windows 10 is going to power your phone, your tablet, your PC and even the Xbox One console. Yes. Windows is coming to the Xbox. Windows 10 fixes a lot of things that went wrong with Windows 8.1. With 
the launch of Windows 8.1, Microsoft showcased this new Metro UI that wasn't liked by people who use the desktop PC. With Windows 10, it fixes all that. The biggest new feature of Windows 10 is a user interface concept that Microsoft calls Continuum. With Continuum, users can seamlessly switch between the Metro environment and also the traditional Windows Explorer. So you've got two different environments built for different user interfaces, but still you can seamlessly switch between them across devices. After years, Microsoft has changed the icons on Windows and overall look and feel of the Explorer environment is completely different. You get new icons which look pleasant and they have got a flatter design language and they look nicer. With Windows 10, Siri now has competition because Microsoft's Cortana comes to Windows. So on the taskbar, there's a search option out there which has Cortana embedded. So you get a virtual assistant on your PC, on your desktop, and also on your console. One of the new concepts that Microsoft introduced with Windows 8 was the charms bar. Now the charms bar was panned, now it's gone. Replaced by an action center which acts like a notification center just like what you see on Mac OS. It looks really nice and it's very intuitive to use. With Windows 10, Microsoft has added new gesture support for the trackpad. So now you can actually navigate the user interface just like a Mac. So you can swipe away on your trackpad and it's very easy to use. A word of advice for all of you guys who are planning to install the consumer preview out here. It's very buggy. It's a work in progress and Microsoft is radically changing the OS at this moment. It's going to get released officially sometime later this year and we recommend that you use it at that time. Like taking selfies don't we so we thought why not tell you how to take that perfect selfie and next up Sahil Maniktala helps you in taking one taking selfies is a fun way to show the world your confidence personality and fashion sense from presidents to Academy Award winners everybody's doing it Taking a good selfie is an art, and here are a few tips that can make you a pro at taking a selfie. Step 1. Instead of taking the picture head-on, experiment with different angles to show off your features. If you turn your head a few degrees to the right or left, your features will appear less flat. Step 2. You can't go wrong with smiling. Maybe smiling for the camera or camera phone, as the case might be. It makes you feel a little bit silly, but taking a random photo of yourself with your phone is a silly enough action in itself. But if you want to experiment, try going with a serious persona and even a cool collected expression could also work. And guys, pouts are no longer cool. Step 3. The best selfies have more than just a face. Whether you take your selfie inside or outdoors, check around you first to see what's going on in the background. Get the headroom right and the background in focus and voila, you get a perfect selfie. Step 4. Love it or hate it. It's a selfie stick and you can get some really good angles and get the entire background. A selfie stick basically helps you to extend your arms and gives you a greater field of view in your selfies. And don't worry about the click. These selfie sticks are Bluetooth enabled and you can just press the capture button on the stick to get that perfect selfie. So now we've done our bit to tell you how you can be a pro at taking selfies. Now it's your turn to go ahead and try it out for yourself. And with that, it's time for us to say goodbye on this edition of the Gadgets and Gizmos show. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, tweet us at HLT Gizmos. You can also email us on htgg at artstuck.com. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Until then, keep loving technology and spend wisely. <laughs>